Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Nukman Hakim bin Muhammad Shahizal and I am from group 6. So today we will be explaining about Moh Circle. So my group members are me, Muhammad Nukman Hakim bin Muhammad Shahizal. The next one is Ahmad Zikri, Ir- Zikri Irshad bin Muhammad Azmi. And the third one is Nik Muhammad Naim bin Hassan. And the last one is Ahmad Fawaz bin Ahmad Nazri. So let's go to our topic which is more circle. For the introduction, the transformation equation for plane stress can be represented in graphical form by a plot known as more circle. This graphical representation is extremely useful because it enables you to visualize the relationship between the normal and shear stress acting on various inclined planes at a point in a stress body. Using Mohs circle, you can also calculate principal stress, maximum shear stress and stress on inclined planes. Okay, so this is the stress transformation equation which is sigma x1 minus sigma x plus sigma y over 2 equals to sigma x minus sigma y over 2 times cos 2 theta plus tau xy times sin 2 theta and then you will get tau x1 y1 equal to negative sigma x plus sigma y over 2 times sin 2 theta plus tau xy and then times with cos 2 theta. So as you can see the diagram below, all the data can be obtained from the diagram such as here is the sigma y and here is the sigma x. So all the information we can get from the image. So you must have a look at the image properly to get the correct information. Okay, we will go through to derivation of Mohs circle. If we vary theta from 0 to 360 degree, we will get all possible values of sigma x1 and tau x1 y1 for a given stress state. Eliminate theta by squaring both sides of 1 and 2 equation and adding the two equation together. As you can see, this is the formula. Okay, so the formula is sigma x1 uh, minus with sigma x plus sigma y over 2 and then you square it plus with tau x1 y1 square equal to and then you will get sigma x minus sigma y over 2 and then you square it plus tau xy square and then that is how the formula of derivation of Mohs circle so to continue with derivation of Mohs circle firstly you need to define sigma average and r sigma average equals to sigma x plus sigma y over 2 and then to get the r you must square root you must square root sigma x minus sigma y over 2 and then you square it plus tau xy square. Next, you need to substitute for sigma average and r to get the answer. So, the, the equation is sigma x1 minus sigma average and then you square it plus tau x1 y1 squared equal to r2 r squared. Uh, this is the equation for a circle center uh, for a circle with center which is sigma average and zero and radius r so the last one is most circle equation the circle with that equation is called most circle named after the German civil engineer Otto Mohr he also developed the graphical technique for drawing the circle in 1882. So this is the equation which is sigma x1 
minus sigma average and then you square it plus tau x1 y1 squared equal to r squared. The graphical method is a simple and clear approach to an otherwise complicated analysis. So that's all from me. I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nik Muhammad Naim bin Hassan. I'm from 5S BME3. So I will continue the presentation and explain more detail about the Moh circle. So to the next slide. So for the next slide is sign convention for Moh circle. So this is the example for sign convention of Moh circle. For the explanation is shear stress is plotted as positive downward. Theta on the stress element equal to 2 theta in Moh circle. So next slide. So I will continue with how to construct Moh circle. So first is constructing Moh circle is there is procedure which is one is draw a set of coordinate as we Stress S1 as positive to the right and shear stress S1, Y1 as positive downward. Second is locate point A, representing the stress conditions on the X phase of the element by plotting its coordinate. Stress S1 equal to stress S and shear, shear S1, Y1 equal to shear SY. Note that point A on the circle corresponds to theta equal to 0 degree. The third one is locate point B, representing the stress co conditions on the Y phase of the element by plotting its coordinate. Stress X1 equal to stress Y and shear, shear stress X1, Y1 equal to negative shear XY. Note that point B on the circle correspond to theta equal to 90 degree. So I will show the example. So this is the example what I have explained earlier, which is one to three procedure. So I will proceed to four to four and five procedure. So next slide is four and five procedure. So continue to the procedure which is number 4. Draw a line from point A to point B. A diameter of the circle passing through point C which is center of circle. Point A and point B are at opposite ends of the diameter which is and therefore 180 degree apart on the circle. Lastly is using point C which is center of the circle. Draw more circle to point A and point B. This circle has radius which is R. The center of the circle C at C which is center of the circle at the point having coordinate stress X1 equal to stress average and shear stress X1 Y1 equal to 0. So for the next slide is this is the example of stress transformation which is graphical illustration. So for the next slide, I will explain more about the stress information and graphical illustration. So for the explanation, on most circle, point A correspond to theta equal to zero. Thus, it's the reference point from which angle are measured. The angle to theta locates the point D on the circle, which has coordinate stress x1 and shear stress x1 y1 d represents the stresses on the x1 face of the inclined element point e which is diametrically opposite point d is located 100 degree from the cd thus point e give the stress on the y1 face of the inclined element thus as we rotate the S1, Y1 axis counterclockwise by an angle theta, the point on most circle corresponding to the S1 
faces move 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 to the counterclockwise by an angle of two theta. So that's all from me for the explanation. So I will give to the next printer. Now I want to explain about principal stress. Is the stress that acts on the principal surface? This surface has no zero force component. That means tau x1 y1 equal to zero. This can be easily done by rotating A and B to the sigma x1 axis. Sigma 1 is stressed on X1 surface and Sigma 2 is stressed on Y1 surface. The object in reality has to be rotated at an angle theta P to experience no stress, no zero stress. So next is the maximum shear stress. The same method to calculate principal stresses is used to find maximum shear stress. Point A and B are rotated to the point of maximum tau x1, y1 value. This it is the maximum shear stress value. Uniform plana stress and shear stress will be experienced by both S1 and Y1 surface. The object in reality has to be rotated at theta angle theta S to experience maximum shear stress. For the next before before this I want to recall that about the mass cycle is a graphical method for easily determining normal and shear stress without using the stress transformation equation. So let's see the MOS cycle constructed from the question. We can now uh, about the sigma x sigma y and tau xy why it is negative because it negative because it rotating to clockwise and it positive because it rotating counter clockwise so for coordinate we get a negative 80 25 and coordinate V is 50-25. So for determining the radius, we use the derivation formula of MOS cycle in early from this video. So firstly, we find the center of two points. We get the center. After calculate, we get a negative 15. So the distance is 15. So next, we calculate, we can calculate the radius of the circle using the formula radius of circles. After calculate, we get uh, the radius is 69.6. Okay, so I will continue the presentation uh, for the example 2. This one is the question from the value. So we will use this value uh, for our calculation. Okay, so first we will, we want to find average stress and tau max, which is shearing stress. Okay, first we need to plot the graph. Okay, this are uh, the first point. We will uh, plot uh, from 400 and negative 530. 
Okay, and the second point, we use negative 550 and 530. So, we will draw the straight line and the intersection at this, at here, uh, will, we, will be the center point. Okay, so we need to find the average stress. Average stress is uh, where the, this center point to the origin line. So, this small part here is the average stress. So, first we need to find this uh, distance. Okay, uh, how we get? We need to uh, 550 and 400 here. Okay, so we get 900. 950, we will divide by 2, we get 475. Okay, so 475. And we want to find uh, this little part here. We will minus by 400. So we get 75. Okay, this 75 is negative because uh, the point is behind the origin line, which is the left side of the uh, x axis. Okay, so we so for A we get negative 75 megapascal, and for B we want to find sharing stress maximum. This one, this uh, green line. Okay, this one is tau maximum, uh, which uh, the below part is positive and the upper part is negative. Okay, tau max is equals to radius. So, to find radius, we will use Pythagoras theorem. Okay, we have 475 and uh, and y we have 530. So, we will get 711.71 megapascal. Okay, for C, we will find uh, sigma 1, sigma 1, uh, the end of the right side and sigma 2, left side, end of left side. So, we, we want to find this point here to the origin line the center point to this point we uh, we call radius so we just need to uh, minus radius and the little part here so we get 636.71 megapascal okay for uh, sigma 2 to the origin line we need to add because the radius here uh, and this one is 75 so we add we get 786.71 megapascal Okay, um, okay, for D, we want to find this angle. Okay, this angle, we will use uh, trigo, trigonometry. Okay, um, here we got uh, 475 and 530. So, we will use tangent. We get 48.18 degree. So, uh, we need to divide by 2 because this is drawing and the early part, which is question, we call real word. So, from drawing... We want to go to real world, we need to divide by 2. From real world to the drawing, we will need we need to multiply by 2. So, this one we divide by 2, we get 24.07 degree. The question is, if element is rotate 23 degree clockwise. So, we need to draw a new line. So, um, the old one is 48.18. Okay, so 23 is from question. So, question is from real word. So, when uh, we want to enter this drawing, we need to multiply by 2. Okay, so the old angle and plus the new angle, we get 94 degree something like that. So, we, we get this new line. We need to find this angle. So, this angle, uh, okay, this one is 180, right? So, we just minus this, this one, and this. So, we get 44 degree. So, X, we, we use sign and we get 494.4 4, and Y, we use cosine. Cosine and Y, we get 511.96. Okay, because this Y is in, in on the tau, tau line, so we consider it as the tau XY, 511.96 megapascal. For sigma X, this one sigma X. Uh, we want to find from this point to the origin line. So, this one is 494 and we need to add 75. We get 569.4 megapascal. Okay, for sigma y down here, we want to find this point to the origin line. So, we need to uh, minus 75. Okay, this is 494. 494 total. Minus 75, we get 419.4 megapascal.
Okay, this one is a final answer. Tau XY, we get 511.96 is in uh, clockwise rotation because uh, clockwise is negative. So, uh, tau XY is in the upper part. Upper part is negative. So, we consider it clockwise. Okay, so the arrow to the right. Okay, and for X, 569, 569 um, uh, is negative because it's in the left side of X, 8C. So, negative is compression. Okay, this one is um, positive because uh, it's, it is in right side of X axis. So, positive is tension for 19.4. Okay, and the situation is in 23 degree clockwise. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you.